Okay guys, welcome to today's lesson in statics. Today we're covering problem number 92 from chapter 4. So number 92 says, two tape spools are attached to an axle support at bearings A and D. The radius of spool B is 30 millimeters, and the radius of spool C is 40 millimeters. Knowing that the tension B equals 80 newtons, and that the system rotates at a constant rate, determine the reactions at A and D. Assume that the bearing at A does not exert any axial thrust and neglect the weights of the spools and axles. So, I've gone ahead and drawn the free bar diagram. As you can see, we have reaction forces at D. We have three unknowns. We have two unknowns at A because there's no axial thrust generated or reacted to. And we have our unknown at tension C. Tension B is given to us. So in total, we do have three and two and one make six unknowns. So we can solve this for static equilibrium. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say, for our first equation, we're going to say the moment about point A is equal to the sum of all position vectors going to each force. And these are vectors, so we'll have a cross product. And determine that, we'll evaluate that as our matrix, the determinant of our matrix for each one. So writing this out a little further, looks like we have position vector going from the origin at A to the tension in the, in the belt spool at B. We have a position vector going from A to C and position, position vector going from point A to point D. So we'll have three separate moments we'll have to evaluate. So let's go ahead and write that out. We have the reaction or the, we have the reaction A not contributing to the moment because it's as zero position, zero uh, perpendicular distance. So we have our Position vector going from A to B cross the tension force at B plus, that would be one cross product. We have the position vector going from point A to point C cross the ten unknown tension vector going at point C plus the reaction at point D. So we have a position vector going from point A to point D cross the force, the reaction force at point D. And these are all summing to equal zero. So we'll go ahead and write our matrix for each one of these. And I'm going to go ahead and shift down, use the lower portion of the paper to write our action forces. Bring this in the frame. So we have a position vector going. Position vector going from A to B, so that would be 90 millimeters, we'll convert into our base units meters, 90 millimeters in the, on the x-axis, so in the positive i-hat direction. So we have our, our position vector going to be R from A to B equals 0 0.09, that's 90 millimeters in meters, convert to meters in the i-hat direction. And there's no components in the K, J and K. We're going to write plus 0J and plus 0K hat. The tension vector we know at point B is simply going to be 80 newtons pointing down the negative J hat direction. So knowing this, we can go ahead and write out our determinant for our matrix. We know the first matrix will simply be we have... The unit vector across the top row, the position vector across the middle row, and finally the force vector across the bottom row. So we'd have 0 0.09 in the i direction, 0 force, we have j hat, we have 0 in the direction vector, and we have negative 80 in the force. And one thing I actually need to correct, we have to go a positive distance of 30 millimeters, the radius of the spool at B out. We need to go 30 millimeters out and along the z-axis. We have plus 0 0.03 meters acting in the k-hat direction. So this would be plus 0 0.03. So we'd have the k-hat. This would be 0 0.03 and then 0 for the force. And then we're going to rewrite the first two columns. i-hat, j-hat, 0. 0, 0.09, 0, 0, and negative 80. And now to evaluate this matrix, we'll simply 
go down to the right and multiply and add, add the, add the product, go up and to the right in three diagonals and subtract the products. So going down to the right here, we have zero plus another zero plus we have a value here, we have negative 80 times 0 0.09. So going to our calculator, we would say negative 80. Okay, so we have negative 80 times 0 0.09. And we're adding this value, so we'll put it in parentheses, it's negative 7.2 k-hat direction. That's our three diagonals that we're adding. Now we'll subtract three diagonals, so we're subtracting 0, subtracting this value, so we put a minus outside and then put in parentheses. We have negative 80 times 0 0.03. And this is in the i hat direction. So this is minus negative 2.4 in the i hat. And finally, we have minus zero value in the j hat, so minus zero. So we have our first matrix already solved for. Next, we'll go from A to C. So let's go, right, go ahead and write out what our position vector is going to be right here. R from A to C. This appears to be 90 plus 120, which we need in the calculator. We know it's 210, but 90 plus 120 is going to be 210 millimeters in the i-hat direction. So we'll convert that into meters, so 0 0.21 in the i-hat. It appears that tension vector C is acting in the negative k direction, but in order to get there, we need to go up into the positive j hat in order to reach it. We need to go 40 millimeters in the positive j hat direction to reach it. So plus 0 0.04 j hat. And then there's no distance in the k hat for the position vector. Plus 0 k hat. Next, we'll look at tension in C. The tension in C appears to be unknown. So this is one of our unknowns with the sole force. So it's acting in the negative k direction, so we have zero component i hat in the x-axis, zero component in the y-axis, j hat. And finally, we have acting in the negative k direction, negative on the negative z-axis, tension in C. So minus tension in C in the k hat direction. So we can go ahead and write out our... <clears throat> matrix down here, or actually we can stay up here. We'll write our matrix right here. We would have, first we would have our i hat, and then we'd have our position vector of 0.21, zero for our force. Our j hat would be 0 0.04, zero again for our tension component, and then we'd have zero in the k hat. So we'd write our k hat here and write zero for our position vector and then minus tension at C. We'll evaluate this, we're writing the first two columns again. So I hat 0 0.210, J hat 0 0.04, and then zero. All right, again, we evaluate this the same way. We go ahead and we go down to the right and multiply and add. So we'd have negative 0 0.04 tension C in the i-hat direction. And then we'd have zeros here for adding two more zeros. We're now subtracting, going up and to the right. So we have 0, 0, so minus 0, minus 0. And then we have minus, in parentheses, negative 0.21 tension C component. And this is in the j-hat direction. So we have our matrix for the cross product for A to C, the tension at C completed. Now we will go ahead and do our tension vector going from our reaction forces at D. So I'm going to go ahead and write out the position vector going from A to D. It appears to be 90 plus 120 plus 90. We know this 90 plus 120 was 210. So 210 plus 90 be 300 or 0 0.3 meters in the i direction. 
again, we can add this all up 90 and 120 and 90, add this up. We know it'll make 300 or 0.3 meters. Now we're going along axis X, the X axis to the reaction at D. There is no J or K hat component for the position, position vector that is. So plus zero J hat and plus zero K hat. Our reaction force is at D itself. It appears to have three because this is a roller bearing. So we will say we have DX and I component plus DY the J component plus DZ in the K hat component. Now I'll write down the matrix down here. So this tells us, write our matrix out, we know we have the I, J, and K components on the first row. Second row is position vector going from A to D, 0 0.3, and then finally DX. Then we'd have the J hat, which has zero for position and DY for the reaction force. In the K hat, we have zero in the K hat and DZ for a component. We'll then repeat the first two columns, 0 0.3 and zero. We have DX and DY. We'll evaluate this, this matrix. Let's determine this matrix by going down to the right and multiplying and adding the products. So we have 0 plus a 0 plus, now we do have a, a, a value here, 0 0.3 DY in the K at direction. We'll now subtract going up and to the right, so minus 0 minus zero, and finally minus 0 0.3 dz in the j hat direction. Remember all of these all of these cross products are equal to zero. So we now sum these cross products up for each matrix, combine them into their respective components or their like components, i, I hats and the j hats and k hats, and then set them equal to zero. So writing out a full moment, we have we have to look at each one of these components individually. So I notice where I did my first matrix, I have minus a negative become a positive 2.4 in the I hat, so two point positive 2.4. And then we have a looking at this minus a 0 0.04 tension C and I had as well. Looking around as well, we have no more components. There's only two components we have in the I had direction. These are in the I hat. We then have look at our J hat components. We'd say our J hat we have minus a negative again will become positive point two one tension C in the J hat direction and then we have a minus a point three DZ reaction this is in the J hat direction finally in the K hat we have right here we have a point three DY in the K hat and we also have, looking around, scanning, we have a negative 7.2 in the k-hat direction as well. Now remembering that the moment about A, the moment about the origin, is equal to zero. We can break each one of these components up equal to zero. So we have 2.4 minus 0 0.04 times tension at C equal to zero. We can move the 0 0.04 over the other side and rewrite this as 2.4 equals 0 0.04 tension at C divided by 0 0.04. So we have 2.4 divided by 0 0.04 
which tells us the tension at C is equal to 60 newtons. We then have another equation we can write. We have 0.3 dy minus 7.2 k equals zero. We can move the 7.2 to the other side. We'd have 0.3 dy equals 7.2, which tells us the reaction dy is equal to 7.2 divided by 0.3. 7.2 divided by 0.3, which would be equal to 24 newtons. Finally, looking at our middle, our middle equation, we have 0.2 times tension C minus 0.3 dz equals zero. So we can replace tension at C with 60 we have here. We can write 0.21 times 60 equals, moving this equation, 0.3 to the other side, equals 0.3 dz. So now solving this, we have 0.21 times 60, which is equal, this is equivalent now to 12.6, so over 0.3. And we get dz reaction in the z direction for reaction at d, is equal to 42 newtons. We can now write a few of our other equations for equilibrium. Some of the forces in the x direction equal to zero, which this tells us since there is no other component, there is no x act, act force acting in the x direction, this would tell us that dx equals zero. We can also do summation of forces in the y direction. Okay, summation force in the y direction. And this would tell us equal to zero that the reaction Ay minus the 80 pound of the 80 newton force at school B and then plus we have our reaction at D, which we now know is tw positive 24 newtons up, is equal to zero. This would tell us Ay would be equal to the difference of 80 and 24, but a positive value moved to the side. So it would simply be 80 minus 24, which is going to be 56. Newtons. So we have Ay. Finally, we can do summation of forces in the z direction equal to zero. This tells us Az minus the tension in C, which we know is 60 minus, so minus our 60 newton force in C, and then plus our reaction dz, 42, equals zero. This tells us a z reaction would be a difference of 60 and 42, but positive, which would make it 18 newtons. So we have, we have found all of our reactions in the x for x. We know dz is zero dy is 24, dz is 42, the tension at spool C is 60 newtons, the reactions Ay and Az respectively are 56 newtons and 18 newtons. All right guys. Thanks for joining me in another Simple STEM Solution video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support this channel or have particular questions you want answered, be sure to check out my Patreon community via the link in the description below.